as an old friend, Hunter Thompson, said, you know, buy the ticket, take the ride, you know. So I'll just enjoy the ride while it's going. Coming up on this edition of Movie Star. From Edward Scissorhands to the swaggering Captain Jack Sparrow, an actor who sets new standards as a leading man, Johnny Depp. I know for a number of years, you know, that the only reason that I've been able to keep going and, and, and keep doing the movies that I've been lucky enough to do is because there was a certain, you know, a sort of core group of, of people out there who, who stuck with me. Johnny Depp portrays offbeat, enduring characters, and according to some magazines, He's the sexiest man alive. Everyone, stay calm. We're taking over the ship. He's got a lot of uh, likability. And that always helps a movie, you know? He's fun to watch. It's amazing work with Johnny Depp. He's a really incredible actor, and he's also a really cool person. Working with Johnny is just fantastic, and I'm really lucky. Actors admire him, and directors seek him out. But Johnny Depp also has a bad boy side, with a few arrests on his record. However, he finds peace of mind by living in France and avoiding the spotlight whenever he can. The thing that keeps me uh, as together as as humanly possible is just not having to be a, a part of this kind of thing every day, you know. I just, I don't, I don't do this, this sort of thing much. Premieres make him uncomfortable, and Depp is shy according to his friends. But Us Magazine's Thelma Adams says that that's part of what his fans love. I think what's attractive about him is a combination of two things. He has that outsider, bad boy vibe, but underneath it, there's a, an endearing quality to him. How do you smile? Why are you smiling? I don't know. If you look at his major roles, like his breakthrough role in Edward Scissorhands, that modern fairy tale is about an outsider who, at heart, has like the best heart. And that quality is what makes Johnny Depp such a star. Johnny Depp grew up in Kentucky. He was born John Christopher Depp on June 9, 1963. At 15, his parents divorced, and shortly thereafter, Johnny quit high school, joined a band called The Kids, and got married. At age 20, Depp moved to Los Angeles with his wife, where she introduced him to actor Nicolas Cage. It was Cage who convinced Johnny to audition for his first movie role. Depp made his film debut in 1984 as an ill-fated teen in the horror film A Nightmare on Elm Street. Legend has it director Wes Craven's 15-year-old daughter saw Depp's audition and convinced her dad to give him the part. Next, he landed a co-starring role in the teen comedy Private Resort. It was around this time his first marriage ended. In 1986, Johnny spent 10 weeks in the Philippines as part of Oliver Stone's Vietnam War drama, Platoon. Unfortunately, his role was edited down to a minor character. But the next year, a new television role on the fledgling Fox network would turn Johnny into a teen idol, 21 Jump Street. He was in a part of that series for four years, playing an undercover cop who goes undercover in one after another high school that has trouble. He wasn't interested in doing that. It wasn't enough for him. Johnny's restlessness during his 21 Jump Street run manifested itself in some bad boy behavior. He was arrested for fighting with a security guard. When the series ended in 1990, Johnny was anxious to put the show far behind him. That's when director John Waters' comedy Cry Baby came along. The same year, Depp began a collaboration with another offbeat director, Tim Burton. The movie, Edward Scissorhands, co-starring Vincent Price. I think when you look back over time and over Hollywood movie history, the Tim Burton-Johnny Depp collaboration is going to be one of the great director-star collaborations in Hollywood. Edward Scissorhands earned Depp a Golden Globe nomination, now a bona fide star. Depp paid homage to his roots by making a cameo in Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. He also made the first of several music video appearances, joining Faye Dunaway in Tom Petty's Into the Great Wide Open. He and Dunaway reteamed in 1993 for the May-December romance, Arizona Dream. That same year, Depp played a silent movie fan named Sam in the kooky love story, Benny and June. Although Benny and June wasn't a major moneymaker, critics liked it, and Depp earned his second Golden Globe nomination. 
Around this time, Johnny bought a Hollywood nightclub on Sunset Boulevard and named it the Viper Room. The venue would later gain notoriety as the place where actor River Phoenix died of a drug overdose. Depp reportedly wasn't in the club at the time. He was likely busy with What's Eating Gilbert Grape, co-starring an 18-year-old Leonardo DiCaprio as his brother. Depp plays the older sibling. Johnny Depp's offbeat movie choices were winning him praise from the critics and a loyal following, something his next character could only dream of. That's a wrap. Johnny Depp's second project with director Tim Burton was a biography of the worst director of all time and an infamous crossdresser, Ed Wood. The movie's release coincided with Johnny's latest brush with the law. He'd been charged with two counts of criminal mischief for trashing a hotel room. The incident wouldn't overshadow Depp's triumph in Ed Wood, which earned him a third Golden Globe nomination. Johnny followed up with the romantic drama Don Juan DeMarco, co-starring his old friend, Faye Dunaway. Depp plays a mental patient who believes he's a descendant of the world's greatest lover. He only agreed to star in Don Juan DeMarco if the producers cast Marlon Brando as his psychiatrist. Johnny rounded out 1995 with Dead Man, a strange art house western co-starring Robert Mitchum, and the more conventional thriller, Nick of Time. Now you see, honey, that's why you want to wear a helmet and knee pads with these things, because you never know when you're going to fall down and go boom. Come on. Depp's venture into the mainstream didn't catch on with audiences. He'd have better luck two years later with Donnie Brasco, the crime drama about a real-life FBI agent who goes undercover in the mafia, co-stars Al Pacino. It's people like Al. It's working with people like Al who remind you of how much you love what you do and why you do it. I think he's a very likable guy. The audience feels his, uh, his personality, and I think he's got a lot of... Uh, likability and that always helps a movie you know he's fun to watch while donnie brasco was a modest hit johnny faced some harsh criticism for the brave his debut as a director depp wrote the drama and marlon brando agreed to co-star with him it debuted at the Cannes film festival in 1997 and the brave earned a nomination for the golden palm award it's an enormous undertaking to 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 decide to direct a film first of all that's that's huge and then to direct and act and it, having written the thing, it's, it's a little too much to bite off. Johnny left the directing duties to Monty Python's Terry Gilliam for Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, based on the Hunter S. Thompson novel. Remember, you're 200 feet tall! First of all, I haven't been a huge fan of Monty Python, and, uh, you know, and then obviously his films, you know, Baron Munchausen and Fisher King and so on. Um, yeah, he's somebody I've always wanted to work with, and I was not disappointed. He was already involved in the film before I got involved, and that was one of the reasons I, I joined up, because I wanted to work for them for a long time, because I think, I think he's rather astonishing. In 1999, Depp worked with another of his dream directors, Roman Polanski, in the ninth game. Action! Depp's next film was The Astronaut's Wife. He plays an astronaut who may be possessed by an alien. I, I really hate the idea of you know, playing that sort of leading man guy. So I, I just try to find stuff that, that will make the character interesting. The astronaut's wife didn't find an audience, but Johnny's final movie of 1999 certainly did. Sleepy Hollow took in more than $100 million in the U.S. It was Depp's third movie with director Tim Burton. Depp stars as Ichabod Crane, with a 19-year-old Christina Ricci playing his love interest. He's such an amazing actor, and um, he's so kind and really generous and really cares about how you are and how the scene's going for you, and, and he's also a lot of fun, like we would just joke around. This was a very happy time for Depp, both personally and professionally. He and his girlfriend, French singer Vanessa Paradis, celebrated the birth of a baby girl, and Johnny was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Tim Burton and Johnny's parents were on hand for the dedication. He deserves it, he's a great actor, and uh, now people can just walk all over you. <laughs> for real. We proudly welcome to the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Johnny Depp. John, there we go. The great thing is, it's a beautiful sort of old Hollywood tradition that I'm really I'm really uh, thankful he's still alive, and I'm honored to be a part of that. Depp reunited with Christina Ricci in 2000 for The Man Who Cried, 
He also played both a transvestite and a police lieutenant opposite Javier Bardem in the Oscar-nominated Before Night Falls. Depp could also be seen as a romantic gypsy in the Best Picture nominee Chocolat. I just thought that was a nice story. You know? That was a nice change. Um, and it wasn't, uh, it's not the sort of usual Hallmark card that you get sent, you know. Johnny's next role was a complete about face. He plays George Young, a real life drug dealer in 2001's Blow. Depp had a lot of input into the role and improvised many of his lines. Hey, you have to meet George. Hello. Hi. I felt like I was doing it for George. I was trying to be George for George as much as possible and, and stay true to his truths and his honesty. You know Mr. Young? Hi. Hello, buddy. Congratulations on your conquest of the West Coast. Thank you very much. Next, Depp turned his attention to the Jack the Ripper thriller, From Hell. The movie was directed by the Hughes brothers. We just tried to mainly bring the atmosphere from the graphic novel into the movie, and we tried to definitely do our own thing because we thought, we thought it would be boring just to go see the movie and it's exactly what the comic book is. It's a pleasure to see guys who, who, who are really out there to do the work, and, and it's not about anything other than that. It's just real filmmakers. You know. There's some writing on the wall down the road that I should have a look at. Depp stepped out of the public eye in 2002. He didn't appear in any movies and was living in Paris with Vanessa Paradis, where they celebrated the birth of their second child, a boy. Are you a Mexican or a Mexicant? After a brief vacation from the big screen, Johnny Depp was back in 2003 with a critically acclaimed performance in Once Upon a Time in Mexico, co-starring Antonio Banderas and directed by Robert Rodriguez. Is there anyone who doesn't want you dead? You tell me. But the good reviews from Mexico were nothing compared to the raves Depp received for Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. It was a surprising choice for Johnny, who normally steers clear of big budget blockbusters of the type produced by Jerry Bruckheimer. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. I was actually shocked uh, initially when, when Jerry, you know, came and, and met with me about uh, about doing doing the film, you know, uh, because I, I didn't seem like maybe I was his flavor, you know. He's a unique actor. Uh, he researches his parts. He creates his characters. Uh, he created a look for himself. He could with the beads and the braids and the the bandana and the the slurring of his words and the eye makeup and the the gold teeth and that's all Johnny. Welcome to the Caribbean, Ralph. Depp earned his very first Academy Award nomination for the unique approach. But while Pirates was riding high at the box office, Depp found himself on the defensive after being quoted in a German magazine saying America was like a dumb puppy. Johnny denied any anti-American sentiment, saying the comment was taken out of context and he was merely saying the U.S. was a young country that is still maturing. I buried my dog, mister! Meanwhile, Johnny was busy with another film, Secret Window, a thriller that gave Johnny plenty of screen time to himself. The idea of getting in there and as opposed to just, you know, whatever, you know, reacting, which is what acting is, uh, just being, you know, being and um, behaving um, in that skin. The success of Pirates of the Caribbean has generated plenty of high-profile movie offers, but Depp still seeks out movies that appeal to him. Case in point, Finding Neverland, the story of writer J.M. Barry and the creation of Peter Pan. Good to do J.M. Barry. Pleased to meet you. J.M. Barry, the author? Yes. Pleasure. What I, what I felt when I read the screenplay, I thought, you know, this is, uh, I just thought it was a really nice story and a rare, uh, a rare thing. It's not a film that you see all the time. While scenes in Finding Neverland have vague echoes of Depp's blockbuster pirate movie, it was Johnny's interplay with Kate Winslet and the four boys that charmed the Academy and earned Depp his second Oscar nomination. He makes me laugh and he makes the boys laugh too, which really has worked for what we've needed to do because J.M. Barry made these boys laugh and he made Sylvia laugh in that way. So he's been very, very clever and, uh, and very quick with the jokes. And I've just loved it. I think Johnny Depp is just a fantastic actor and I think he ultimately represents the man who never wants to grow up because he ultimately has this child within him which is still alive and you can see it in his choices of movies he makes. Depp's next choice was director Tim Burton's highly anticipated remake Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. As factory owner Willy Wonka, Depp gave a quirky performance that couldn't have been more different than Gene Wilder's in the first big screen version. Hey, little boy. 
My chocolate must be untouched by human hands. Because the film from the early 70s is so popular and so ingrained in people's memories, uh, it was really, you know, the, you have a couple of choices, you know, I mean, but either way, you have to divert um, as radically as possible away from the film. Um, and the best way to do that is to stick with um, the author's intention, you know. I always love wor working with Johnny, you know, I mean, it's just because he's an actor that likes to try different things all the time and, that, you know, that, that excites me. And each time I work with him, you know, it, it gets better. Try some of this, it'll be good. You look starved to death. Co-starring with Deb for the second time is Finding Neverland co-star Freddie Highmore as Charlie Bucket. I've worked with Johnny before and he's a, he's a really fantastic guy. And he, uh, he's, always, he's, he's always in his character like all the other great actors. Tim Burton's Corpse Bride followed almost immediately. The animated movie marked the fifth Depp Burton collaboration. What, what was really strange is that the character was designed in a and you know, long before I asked Johnny to do it, but it, it, it reminded me of him. The thing I'm, I'm selfishly very excited about is, is, uh, is uh, watching it with my kids, you know. Sharp-eyed fans at the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory premiere could see by Depp's shiny gold teeth that he was hard at work on a sequel to Pirates of the Caribbean. In fact, he was in the middle of filming two sequels simultaneously, one for 2006 and one for 2007. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, continues where the original pirates left off. No, no! Oi! No, no! More wood! Big fire! Playing Captain Jack Sparrow, you know, is, is really, does teeter on the, uh, right on the edge of, uh, of uh, piracy, or, you know, criminal. This is just, you can't imagine that you're just having that much fun playing a character and, and being paid for it. The big screen adventure premiered at Disneyland, where Johnny and his co-stars, Kira Knightley and Orlando Bloom, signed autographs and posed for pictures on the lengthy Main Street red carpet. This is very sweet, you know, this, this kind of support you know, for the film and, and for these characters, it's very touching. Johnny nails it again and, you know, it's fantastic to be a part of it. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, I, I don't, I, it's managed to capture imaginations of, of sort of children and adults alike, which is extraordinary. So it's very exciting. The third release in the Pirates trilogy, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, also premiered at Disneyland and in Japan to excited fans. Not knowing if he'd ever play his beloved Jack Sparrow character again, Johnny was melancholy after the third Pirates trilogy. He just trying to avoid what is inevitable. You know, which is, you know, saying goodbye to this this person you've known for, you know, umpteen months, um, and have been very close to. So, yeah, I hope I hope I get to see uh, Captain Jack again. The captain must have acrimony towards a mutineer. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End cost three hundred million dollars to make and easily made a profit. It earned more than $900 million after just a few months in release. Next, Johnny reteamed with director Tim Burton to play a singing serial killer in the musical Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. The big question before filming this movie, could Johnny sing? Tim and I had spoken about doing the film and, and he asked me, you know, do you, do you think you can do it? Do you think you can sing? And I didn't, I honestly, I mean, the answer that I gave him was I don't know. I'll try. I do. I definitely do my best. I gave him the, you know, the original uh, recording and all, and and I said, well, you know, would you be interested in doing it? And, you know, when he said yes, I mean, I know him well enough to know that if he didn't think he could do it, he would have said no. I thank you, sir. You are a paragon of integrity. Critics praised Johnny singing in Swimmy Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. He was nominated for another Best Actor Academy Award. During no, filming, guarantee. Johnny faced near tragedy when his eight-year-old daughter became gravely ill. She recovered, and Depp says, to say it's the darkest moment, that's nothing. Words are so small. Next, Depp appeared in the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, completing Heath Ledger's unfinished role. Ledger died during filming. Then, Johnny played one of America's most notorious gangsters from the 1930s, John Dillinger, in Public Enemies. I think the fascination is well earned, you know, by, by um, I, think Dillinger, I think Dillinger worked hard for it. Johnny's Public Enemies co-star, 
Academy Award winner Marion Cotillard was impressed. He's a very good actor first and, uh, and really very generous and, uh, and he's totally in love with Dillinger. In 2010, Johnny made an impact critically and financially by teaming with director Tim Burton for the seventh time in Alice in Wonderland. This 3D fantasy based on the children's book topped the global box office for four weeks. Johnny plays the Mad Hatter to Mia Wasikowska's Alice. Alice in Wonderland premiered in London. It's a magnificent uh, uh, extravaganza here, you know, what they've created, and, and um, it's, it's uh, the perfect complement, I believe, to Tim's film. It's the perfect, which, which is also Tim's film being the perfect complement to Lewis Carroll um, and that kind of beautiful, absurdist, surrealist uh, uh, um, uh, literature, so it's very exciting. I love Johnny's work, and so to be able to see how he actually created a character was amazing, and, and I love the dynamic, uh, you know, between Alice and the Hatter, and I love their friendship, so it was, I always loved shooting, you know, with, with Johnny. After Alice in Wonderland, Johnny made the drama The Rum Diary, based on a novel by Hunter S. Thompson. Depp also produced the movie, and he returned to his Captain Jack Sparrow character for Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. With such a busy schedule, Depp appreciates the downtime between pictures even more. All you want to do is just spend time with your kids, you know. You just want to hang out with them and do stuff with them, you know. So, you, you know, if you end up playing Barbies for 12 hours, okay, that's cool, you know, why not? Thank you for watching this Johnny Depp edition of Movie Star. Join us next time for another inside look at your favorite stars of the big screen.